When a person wants to assume a new identity, we have to ask why is that? The new identity is a solution and we have to discover to what is it a solution? Because no one can change their sex. Sex is determined at conception. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lila Rose podcast. Today I'll be interviewing Dr. Miriam Grossman, who is a board-certified child and adolescent psychiatrist. She has written several books, including the forthcoming book, Lost in Transnation, which is her guidebook for parents in today's world that is beset with gender ideology and the narrative that is taking hold of many children today about how they should and can be transgendered. Dr. Miriam Grossman is someone I've I've actually known for over a decade and a half. I met her as a college freshman at UCLA. At the time, she had just come out with her first book, which is called Unprotected, A Campus Psychiatrist Reveals How Political Correctness in Her Profession Endangers Every Student. Now, she wrote this book and she talked in this book about the hookup culture. She talked about sexual education and its harm, the way that it is harming children and the way it's done today, especially promoted by groups like Planned Parenthood, where it's sexualizing children, encouraging early sexual activity. She talked about the harm of all of that. But at the time, 15 years ago, Dr. Grossman published her book as Anonymous MD. She did not put her name on the book because at the time, there would have been so much heat on her for in any way criticizing Planned Parenthood and some of the major players in the sexual education space. Now, in a way, Dr. Grossman was a prophet because her early criticisms about the sexualization of young children, about the early gender ideology that was already being pushed on children that were telling children that their identity was not connected to their biology, their body, but that their identity was whatever they thought or was in their mind, uh, was very important. I mean, her, her early work shows us in many ways the logical conclusion of where gender ideology and the wrong sexology takes us and takes our society. Later, Dr. Grossman would put her name on that book, and now it's published under her name, Dr. Miriam Grossman, but at the time, it was so sensitive. I remember meeting with her as a college freshman, having read her book and found out that it was really her behind it. She was actually working at UCLA at the time, so it was a bit providential, and I asked her, can I interview you publicly on this? Because your voice as one of the lone voices, a child psychiatrist speaking out against the harm of early sexualization of children and how today's sex that is doing this is so important. And at the time, she chose to remain anonymous for a period. Now, Dr. Grossman is out and about speaking loudly about the harm of sexualization of young children and the harm of the new transgender ideology that is just taking over in this country and globally and harming a whole generation of children. So today, we're going to focus more on Dr. Grossman's upcoming book, Lost in Transnation, talk about why she wrote this book, what you can do as a parent or just as a responsible adult who might have children in your life who are struggling with this or school systems or therapists who are pushing gender ideology on your kids and what you can do proactively to protect children. But before we get into today's interview with Dr. Miriam Grossman, a special thank you to our sponsor. Our sponsor is Seven Weeks Coffee. Seven Weeks Coffee is the premier pro-life coffee roasting company that delivers the most delicious coffee beans right to your door to be part of your morning ritual. Seven Weeks is named after when a heartbeat can be detected in the unborn baby at seven weeks gestation and is a coffee company that is devoted to the pro-life cause. 10% of all proceeds, not just profits, Go to support mothers and children in need, supporting pregnancy resource centers and helping provide for financial care and material care for mothers and children in need. So you can order your seven weeks coffee at sevenweekscoffee.com. That's S-E-V-E-N weekscoffee.com. And you can use promo code Lila, yours truly, Lila, to get 10% off your order. Check it out, sevenweekscoffee.com. For people who aren't familiar yet with your work, Dr. Grossman, give us a quick background. Well, sure. Uh, I'm a board-certified uh, child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. I'm a medical doctor, went to medical school. Um, I also did some training in pediatrics. Uh, I worked for many years at UCLA Student Counseling Center with UCLA students. 
Uh, and there I became aware of the uh, infiltration into my profession of a, a political and social ideology. And I recognized uh, how harmful that is in many instances to my, my young patients, especially young women. They were coming in, so many of them, with sexually transmitted infections, um, you know, pregnancy concern, having one or more abortions, and they were really suffering. I started to look into what young people are taught about their sexuality. Uh, I discovered that it was not at all about health. It was about freedom. It was about basically going out and uh, doing whatever you uh, chose to do at the moment. And that, of course, is a dangerous philosophy to have in terms of your physical and mental health. Uh, so the, the way that I got into the transgender issue was in the midst of studying plan, what Planned Parenthood and SICUS and these different organizations are telling young people, I discovered to my utter astonishment that all the way back in, uh, in the 2000s, you know, 15, over 15 years ago, even 20 years ago, kids were being told that they can have an identity that is completely separate from their biology mm. and that that is part of normal uh, human, the human experience, so to speak, that it is not a disorder if you are so uncomfortable with your sexed body that you actually want to have uh, normal organs removed. And you can imagine, as a child psychiatrist, uh, I was very alarmed to see this was happening. Uh, frankly, I just, I, just, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, you don't want to be exposing young children to these bizarre ideas about being born in the wrong body and about needing to have your body medically altered, permanently altered, and sometimes sterilized in order to bring it into, into what they call alignment with your mind. So these are all bizarre ideas. Uh, sadly enough, these days, they're no longer considered bizarre. They're considered mm -hmm. truth. They are not truth. They are not based in any medical foundation. And uh, a few years ago, I began seeing uh, gender-confused or gender-distressed young people and their parents. And uh, I'll tell you, Lila, the, um, the devastation from all this and the suffering on so many levels from all this um, is so massive and so huge that I felt that I, I really, I have to write another book and I have to warn parents before it hits their home. Okay, so before you're sitting at the dinner table and your son says, I have something to tell you, I'm actually a girl, I want to be called by this name, I want to be called she, her, and I want to have my puberty blocked. So I need for you to take me to a gender clinic. So this, most parents are blindsided by this announcement. I've talked to hundreds of parents. So they don't know what to do. They go to a gender clinic and then they're blindsided once again when the so-called gender S expert just puts, your, puts the child in the driver's seat and says to the parents, well, if your son thinks that he's a girl, then you just have to embrace him as a girl. And if you are unable to do that, well, then you are the problem. Mm -hmm. I was interviewing Chloe Cole recently, who I know you know, who is just an incredible detransitioner, had the double mastectomy at age 15 here in California. And she was sharing how her parents were basically threatened. That 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 typical line that you're we're hearing all over the place, you know, do you want a a dead uh, daughter or do you want a, you know, a dead child or do you want an alive son? Because Chloe was having gender dysphoria, thought she was a boy. And, you know, you talk about this in your book. So this is the, the, the other side 
side of the story that's not being shared is the the impact on a whole generation of parents today who are being told they cannot protect their child. And in fact, it would be wrong for them to in any way inter- intervene with this constant, quote unquote, affirmation. Talk a little bit more about what parents are facing today and, and what they're going through, especially when they're caught up in the um, in the system, the medical system that says it's wrong to treat gender dysphoria. You have to actually transition the kids. Correct. So this is the impossible situation that parents are put in by, quote unquote, gender affirming care, by uh, gender experts, gender clinics, and not only them, but, you know, their, their pediatricians and the endocrinologist and our politicians, so many of them and our president, you know, they're hearing it from every corner that if they don't affirm, quote unquote, their child, their child m- might commit suicide and it'll be because of their lack of a- affirmation. Now, you know, that is just an impossible position to be put in because a parent knows whether they have a son or a daughter. And so they're being told to to ignore their their gut feelings, to ignore what they've known for all those years that the child, even before the child was born, they might have been aware whether they're having a boy or a girl. And suddenly they're supposed to deny all of that and uh, put their seal of approval on this new identity, which does not feel right at all. The parents know the child. The parents know that the child has many uh, comorbid conditions, such as anxiety, depression. Uh, A lot of these kids are autistic. And the parents want to say, well, hold on a minute, you know, just a minute here. You know, this, this child has had ongoing issues. Shouldn't we look at that? Shouldn't we look at the fact that during COVID, she or he was isolated and depressed and just on, you know, on YouTube 24-7 watching these uh, transitioner influencers? And don't you think we need to just go slowly and look at stuff that's happening in the family? I mean, basically, the parents are saying, shouldn't we just do a normal psychiatric evaluation on this child? (laughs) Shouldn't we take our time and get to know this child and what their life is all about and why they might possibly be uh, choosing to, 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 uh, to have this, this new persona? You see, when a person uh, wants to assume a new identity, we have to ask, why is that? The new identity is a solution, and we have to discover through getting to know the child and the family to what is it a solution, because no one can change their sex. Sex is determined at, uh, at conception. It is not, you know, we're hearing all the time now, all the time, you know, uh, uh, sex assigned at birth, no. Sex is not assigned at birth. Sex is established permanently at conception. So kids are being told from a very early age that they may they may have been told they're a boy or a girl by mistake. That may have been an error. Okay, so just back to the parents. The parents are in an impossible position. They're uh, terrified that they could lose their child. So, of course, they're going to go along with whatever the so-called experts tell them to do. But then as they go down that road, many of them discover that their child is just getting worse and worse. And that, you know, the child is moving toward medicalization, the um, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones. And, you know, it's, it's really a dangerous path. And that is why I wrote this book. I want parents to have the information and the tools that they need to prevent this from ever entering their home, from ever getting a hold on their child's mind. They have to reach the child first. We're seeing 
We're seeing like in states like California, there's even legislation that is um, being considered that would penalize parents for refusing to go along with um, the radical affirmation path that gender ideologues are are insisting on. What's your what's your take on that disturbing trend? I mean, this is already happening in places like Canada, but it seems to be creeping into the United States, too. Oh, absolutely. It's it's not only creeping, it's it's here. I mean, I have stories in my book of wonderful, loving, devoted parents who were uh, found guilty uh, by the state of what they call abuse and medical neglect by refusing to uh, go along with the narrative, refusing to consider their son, their daughter, refusing to uh, agree to uh, give their daughter testosterone, and they experienced, you know, the the ultimate catastrophe, which is to have your child forcibly removed from your home and placed with another family, uh, and then that family goes ahead and medicalizes your child against your wishes. This is happening in our country. People should not think that it's it, it's not happening. It is happening. I've, I've met the parents to whom this has happened. What's the recourse? What recourse do parents have? You know, well, uh, once it's 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 far along, uh, as far along as that, they do still have recourse. There are excellent lawyers that represent parents and can help them out of this uh, disaster. Uh, and I and I tell some of those stories. And I have uh, I have two appendices in my book written by attorneys that are specialists in this area of transgenderism and what's happening to families. One is about schools and one is about child protective services, uh, how to know your rights. But you see, Lila, I want parents to know all this stuff before it hits them. Okay. That's the best thing to be educated beforehand. You can put the school on notice This is before anything goes haywire at the school, before you find out that your daughter is using the boys' bathroom. You you put the school on notice in advance that we are not, we do not allow this. We have, we know our constitutional rights and we do not permit any uh, uh, transitioning, social transitioning of any sort of our child. Uh, so, you, you know, you, 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 and furthermore, we do not want our child being uh, told about gender ideology. We don't want our child, we don't permit our child to join, uh, you know, these uh, clubs that exist in which this ideology is uh, promoted. We do not permit all those things. So I have the forms there. I have links. I have a, you know, in-depth explanation of what you need to do to protect your kids before anything happens. Mm. In terms of the families Mm. that are already in this uh, terrible situation, there's also a lot of support that they can get from other families who have been there, from the many groups that now exist. Um, You know, we're in a better situation even than we were a year ago or two years ago when families were really, really at a loss of where do they get information, where do they get support, and that's why... Well, you know, I'll I'll, I'll mention one other thing, and that is my profession, uh, the psychiatric profession, the psychological profession, the entire mental health profession has just simply um, abandoned families and abandoned Mm -hmm. parents. And they have um, signed on to this narrative, hook, line, and sinker. And, uh, you know, when parents are distraught over this situation with their child and they want to speak to someone about it, uh, unless they find, they carefully are able to find the, the right therapist who's going to support their position, their gender critical position, if they don't, if they go to a uh, an affirming or, or just a, you know, a, 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 someone who's going along with the narrative of their professional organization, they're going to blame that parent and they're going to say, mm-hmm. you are the problem, mom and dad. You better get with the program. You're transphobic. You are harming your child. Your your home is not safe. So that's another trauma on top of the trauma of having of seeing your child, you know, become convinced of this 
this uh, this uh, impossibility of being the opposite sex. I'm so excited to share about a new brand that you need to know about called Every Life. If you're a parent or if you know little ones that use diapers, you need to know about Every Life. Every Life is the first pro-life diaper company in America that has the best diapers, just as good as any other brand that you're probably using, except the brands that you're using typically are pro-abortion. Every Life, though, is a pro-life brand that gives a percentage of its profits to pro-life organizations like your own pro-life group, Live Action. Every Life diapers are best in quality. They're talking in free. They're created and designed to be safe for your baby and they're awesome. So check out everylife.com, make your first diaper order and use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. How do parents find, let's say they're facing a situation where their child, there seems to be exhibiting distress and maybe something that they believe could be gender dysphoria or discomfort with their body. And so they're they're looking for help and maybe they're in a public school or maybe they're not. I mean, some of these parents and families aren't going to be, you know, maybe they've avoided schools that they feel would be, uh, would weaponize, you know, gender ideology against their kids, but they're still worried about their child, but they're also worried where they can go to for help. Like you just said, there's so many uh, therapists today that are, uh, you know, th- that are part of the narrative. So what what is your advice to find good care for children who are struggling with this or maybe struggling with okay, this? Okay, so I have a list of fantastic resources on my website, which is miriamgrossmanmd.com. Uh, there's a list of uh, there's one of the tabs there that says resources, and uh, you know I have a, a large number. It, it's it's not completely uh, you know it doesn't include every single organization or every single place, but it does include a lot of them. The ones that I highly recommend are there, and parents should not at all despair. There's a lot of help out there. There's a lot. There is. It may be difficult to find somebody because since this is now at epidemic levels. Therapists like myself have, you know, we're just we're just flooded, flooded with families that are begging us to to help out. But there are every day more and more therapists, and there are organizations that have uh, lists of these therapists who are available. And so, I would recommend that they go there if the families uh, feel comfortable going to um, through their church or or. Well, you have to be careful. You have to be careful with that as well, because a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, communities of faith have also gone along with this uh, very, very uh, unscientific and dangerous, uh, uh, I like to call it a belief system. Okay, mm-hmm. it's it's a belief system. It has its own language. It has its own lexicon with words like, you know, uh, uh cisgender and pansexual and, you know, non-binary. These are, parents have to understand that even though the the kids are using them left and right, and they're even to be found on, you know, websites, the the American Academy of Pediatrics is totally with all this new language that that is not based in anything scientific or medical. We are all, aside from 0.02%, of individuals who might have some sort of a chromosomal abnormality or a endocrine abnormality. Um, We are all clearly male or female, like I said earlier, established at conception, permanent, only male or female. Mm -hmm. We cannot change our sex. We can try to appear as the other sex, but not without Mm -hmm. paying a price, a very steep price. You mentioned that there is hope, and that's what your whole book is about. It's a manual of sorts for parents and to give that hope despite the reality of what we're facing to prepare people to, you know, have uh, preparation is the best strategy sometimes, you know, before um, the crisis hits, as you said earlier. What's the story of hope? I know we've just got a few more minutes here, but have you seen turnarounds, you know, where parents got engaged, they were equipped earlier on, and they were able to prevent, you know, that future disaster? of getting estranged from their child or their child seeking medicalization and and transition and all the horrors that come with that and anything that you can uh, you know parting story you can share of, of what of how to do this right um, when when facing with a ch- faced with a challenge instead of getting caught up in the madness oh certainly there's a way out and certainly I have seen kids even kids that get deeply into it can be brought out 
Uh, so, you know, one patient that I had uh, got into this, you know, during COVID and she was uh, already, you know, a, a kid with different uh, psychological issues, um, felt isolated from other kids, went through a very difficult, uh, traumatic, romantic breakup. Then COVID mm -hmm. hit. She was online, you know, 24-7. Uh, uh, she was on um, Discord, a uh, very popular place for these kids to go. She met a bunch of uh, other girls, uh, some of whom were identifying as boys, on blockers, on testosterone. These kids heavily, heavily influenced her. This is a social contagion, okay? So our kids are picking up these ideas and these behaviors from other places from other their friends either online or in real life so this particular girl became very very influenced by these other girls um she began uh changing withdrawing from her family withdrawing from her old friends uh the long and short of it was that she uh one day uh came to her parents and told them that she's a boy she wants to be placed on blockers uh the parents were were shocked, didn't know what to do, took her to a gender clinic. Um, first question at the gender clinic, what are your pronouns? What's your name? What are your pronouns? Parents just were aghast. So like, what are you doing? Very first visit, do you want a, a, a live son or a dead daughter? Just, just like you said, Lila. Very first visit, parents, you need to get on board. You don't have a daughter, you have a son. The parents are just going, what the heck? They got up and they walked out. Walked out. They they found me. I got involved. We had to, you know, w w there was a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, I had to, we had to get the, the, uh, this girl off of, of the internet. Uh, and there's, by the way, in my book, I have another appendix written by uh, an expert on getting control of your kid's internet use and monitoring it. This is mandatory because they're getting fed all this misinformation and they're, they're making contacts with these other kids and some of them might be adults posing as kids that are grooming them. Anyway, Lila, I know we only have another two minutes, but this girl, okay, I, I put her on some medication because I saw after a while that her anxiety and depression was really needed to be treated. She began to do better. She began to realize that these relationships that she had with the girls on Discord were not healthy relationships. These were not healthy girls. Um, you know, her parents uh, brought her back into the family. Uh, you know, brought her back into, you know, spending her time in more healthy ways. Oh, they got her a uh, a puppy. Okay. <laughs> so she, she was responsible for the puppy and had to take the puppy out and got, you know, she got away from her devices and slowly she, she got back to herself. And mm -hmm. so that it, it definitely happens. That's not the only case I've seen. There's many cases of kids desisting it can be difficult. That's why you want to, you know, nip this in the butt. You want to prevent it from mm -hmm. happening in the first place. It is such a tough time for parents today. It's a wild world out there. And for kids, your work is so important. Dr. Grossman, thank you. Where can people follow your work and find your book? All right. So my book, uh, Lost in Transnation, two words, trans and nation, mm -hmm. um, a child psychiatrist's guide out of the madness. It's everywhere, at least it was last time I checked. <laughs> um, I hope that it remains available. Um, please do pre-order it. It's going to be coming out on July 18th. Uh, you can also go to my website, which is miriamgrossmanmd.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, Miriam underscore Grossman. Please do that. I'm, I'm really just trying my best. I'm putting my heart and soul into this because I have seen too much devastation, too much mm -hmm. alienation, and uh, we have to get through this, but, but you need to be smart. 
It, you, mm-hmm. you need to realize no family is immune and you need to be prepared. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. Let's do this again. Hopefully we can get you out here in California and keep up the great work and very excited to have your uh, book shared with our listeners here. I'm sure it will benefit them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lila. Bye.